The search for America's best cake decorator is on. The tiered cake that I'm going to be doing today is inspired by the jewelry store Tiffany's. They make a beautiful box that they package all of their jewelry in. The simplicity of this cake is what I love about this cake. And I guess sometimes the hardest part of decorating a simple cake is how clean you have to keep the lines. This is not a cake I've decorated before. It's the first time I've, I'm doing it like this. It is a new decision that I decided to try so that I can show other people what I can do. So I like doing fondant cakes and I also like drawing on cakes and, and doing the artwork on the cakes. I like shaping cakes so I like to bring it all together and create something even better. So I am cutting out my palm leaves. I decided on the Hawaiian theme because I can utilize uh, my talent as using the airbrush and then some piping skills. I'll be doing a Hawaiian sunset, palm trees on the bottom tier, and a totem pole design on the top tier. There's no real correct way of doing it. That's like saying you can only do something one way, which is not right, you know. In terms of decorating, whatever gets you from point A to point B works. So I was not expecting to do this, but because the cake wasn't released from the pan properly, it doesn't have a nice flat surface, so I'm just filling in all the holes. For the bow, you want a uh, drier consistency to your fondant. So I don't normally like to use powdered sugar, but because it is humid, I'm gonna add a little bit of powdered sugar to get the consistency that I want. What will make my cake different than any other cake, I think, is just that it's just gonna be a nice, clean finish and have a nice clean look at the end. Well, normally in every other circumstance, except for competing, we do two to three layers. We do a crumb coat first, then we cool it, do another coat, and then sometimes I'll do a third coat. I don't want it real heavy for this because I don't want it anything to fall off of it. I just want to make sure it's smooth and straight. One of my concerns with Cake Show is uh, timing and time management. I think the best way to um, combat those fears is to come in on time. What will set my two-tier cake apart from the next challenger is that it is made of olive buttercream, very small amount of gum paste detail. This is a good uh, fondant to use to get it nice and thin. It's a little fresh, which means it's very hard to work with. It's really warm in here and I'm hoping that the fondant is gonna smooth out and not have bump, a lot of bumps on it. Um, I am putting a ribbon at the base so that'll cover up a lot of them. It's a little bubbly, some of the bubbles, I try to push them together. Once you push them together, you get a bigger bubble. Then you can uh, stab it like that. I'm really nervous about getting the cake done on time because it is pretty warm in here and the fondant is reacting to it. So, hope everything goes well. <laughs> Come on! I had to go wash this, I'll be right back. It's kind of has a little crack to it. I'm just gonna change it out just because I didn't like the way that it laid on there. Whenever you add color to fondant, um, it tends to be just a little bit more fickle. Who knew covering a four inch cake would just be the gripe of my day to day? When I first started decorating, I would put a thick layer of buttercream on, and then when I would cover the cake with fondant, it would start to sag and buckle. I learned that you have to have a perfect cake before you can cover it, so you get a nice finish. So I just took a cookie cutter and I just uh, cut out a heart shape, and I'm gonna fill it in with another color. I think the hearts really will stand out as far as something different. Not many people I've seen have done that. The design I'm working on right now is for the totem pole. This cake would be perfect for sweet 16, birthday cake, or a retirement. The tricks I've learned um, through airbrushing classes and seminars is to start and stop. I don't continue a spray. Adjusting the airflow to get a finer detail. At this point, my confidence level is sinking a little bit. You know, I've struggled a little bit with covering fondant. The heat is, 
I kind of trick myself into thinking that it wasn't bad, but it's pretty bad. When I can't cover a four inch cake and I have to do it three times, I'm kind of kicking myself because it's a waste of time, but um, I'm just going to plug along and see what happens. That's the fourth time I've dropped my rolling pin. This part is not really the hard part, it's more of the fun part of it. The parts that we hate doing are the parts where, you know, we're constantly icing cakes and, you know, baking cakes. That's what takes from our time, you know, from the fun part of it at least. So basically right now we're gonna throw some lettuce on this. I'm gonna use teardrop cutter. It's really cool veiner. I kind of feel I'm making up for lost time, but you know, there's never enough time absolutely when you're doing challenges like this. So I'm gonna try my hardest to try to figure it out. I wish it was a little more moist, but it, it'll work. So again, the biggest challenge with this cake is that it needs to be perfect. So if you see like um, any imperfections, such as that or that, you know, you really don't want that, but we'll cover it up with a little ribbon or something. I got it to the right consistency this time. This fondant is still on the dry side, but it'll work for this application. You don't want your fondant too wet when going on, but you don't want it too dry either, because otherwise you'll get cracking. Kind of like this. Oh my goodness, that did not just crack. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start over. Rolling this fondant, it's too dry. So the fondant is really dry and when I put it on my cake, it's starting to crack and I'm gonna have to take it off. And I'm not sure if I have enough time, but I'm gonna have to re-wet the fondant to make it a little bit more stretchable. You can make these pieces months ahead of time. It's a, an affordable um, alternative to getting like your whole cake done and say fondant. There's one problem, a splatter. Like it didn't clean the airbrush enough. Yeah, if you had the exact amount of flowers that you were gonna use, that would set you back a little bit because then you have to remake them. The only concern I have is finishing on time. It's the only concern I ever have. Just kind of ruffling it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the cutter and put this in the place that I just took out. It is very forgiving, so because it's all ruffled, so there's no bad way to do it, really. It's kind of hard to, to goof that up, but. <laughs> With 20 minutes, I think I'm cutting it close, but I'm very nervous. <laughs> oh, That's why we don't use uh, cardboard rounds at my other shop. <laughs> I'm just putting some support in for the next cake that's going to sit right on top of it. Some people use dowels. Since this cake is only a four inch, it's not very heavy. We have these moments where you're kind of looking at the cake and you're kind of shuddering a little bit, but you know, we work it out. You, you kind of have to live with what you make, you know. Now the heat's bothering us a little bit here. Things are starting to sweat, including me. C'est la vie. It is what it is. Sometimes it's easier to do a cake with more details because it's more forgiving. This is where the drama comes in. I'm making the ribbon to go around the base. I'm just gonna set this in the center so the top doesn't fall through. I don't want my time to run out. I'm gonna make the ribbon for the bottom. I normally would use this tool. I'll probably freestyle it. It's gonna be a little bit easier to freestyle it, so. I'm putting a top and a bottom border on it just to finish it off. I'll do some roses on the top that is like a mound of roses, red tipped roses. I am my own worst critic, so I can find, find something wrong no matter what, but I think it turned out pretty good. So far, so good. I like how the colors turned out in the sunset and how the variations of color come together. I learned this from uh, watching another decorator, kind of the foam of the waves, blowing air into it. Airbrush, no color. I'm struggling a little bit um, because you can always add more, you can always uh, do something else to the two-tiered cake. Probably the most difficult 
challenge is the heat and the really soft buttercream. What I absolutely do not want to happen is for my cake to fall apart because of the heat. It's like my table barfed fondant. <laughs> it could be cleaner, but you know what? It's a hamburger and a cake in an hour. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> what else am I supposed to make? I think it's kind of cool. For the tiered cake, I wanted to go a little bit outside of the box. Um, I didn't want to do a traditional wedding cake or a traditional birthday cake. And one of the things I love doing is recreating things that we eat in cake. So it's a little abnormal, but yet fun. X and O. I just made a little initial to really personalize the cake for a customer. And so that's just a really simple trick that any baker can do. Before the time runs out, I'm going to try to get some leaves in and some extra dots here and there. Even though I had a little trouble with the fondant and it was a little warm. The temperature is always something that's hard to deal with in a bakery because with a oven going, it gets so warm sometimes. Just finishing up the last detail and I think I'm done. I got the last one on there, it's all finished. I like how it looks, uh, it's the right shape, it, everything worked well for me, so I, I like how it turned out. I love seeing the people's face when they pick up a cake, surprising them even though they know exactly what they're going to get. It, it's fun to still surprise them and give them a little bit more than what they expected. What I struggled with on the two-tier cake was um, getting the colors correct on the totem pole and getting the dimension and the shadows and they, they turned out a little darker than I would have liked. And what I do love is the flowers, the dimension, the flowers and the palm trees give to the cake. I'm most proud that they came out nice and clean and that they, they look good and they look the way that they're supposed to. It's not even the cake itself, it's the facial expression of my clients. Um, once I see what they see that I've created for them, then I know that it's a beautiful cake. It's someone's birthday cake, they can have whatever they want on it. You know, there's, there's no wrong or, you know, like I could have put a fried egg on top of it and it would look cool, you know, it's, but I wanted to put a cake on it instead. Um, you know, I could have put olives on top of it or I could have put onion rings on top of it, you know. I just thought, hey, you know, we're making cake. Why not put a cake on top of a hamburger? 